So how much of this deficit mess is the result of Bush tax cuts? It's an old fight here. We want to get to it. Bruce Bartlett says plenty. He's former deputy assistant treasury secretary under the first George Bush and was a policy advisor to Ronald Reagan. Let me ha- ask you about this whole thing. Bottom line, we're looking. Let's look at the numbers right now. Uh, give, give, we got a chart coming up. This chart shows the Bush tax cuts were responsible for increasing the debt of the United States by about three trillion over the last decade. Now we have about a fourteen trillion dollar debt right now. Uh, half of it came out since the turn of the century, since Bush came into office, and almost forty, or more than forty percent of that's from taxes, from tax cuts. That's right. At the uh, uh, when Bush took office, we had a debt of about six trillion dollars, and the projections from the CBO were that we were going to run a six trillion dollar surplus. Plus. So by this point, if we had done nothing, we would have had uh, we would have paid off the debt. But we added to that uh, about three trillion dollars of tax cuts. We lost about three trillion dollars of revenue because of the slower economy, and then we added about six trillion dollars of spending, uh, largely due to two unfunded wars and uh, a Medicare drug benefit and a lot of other things. And so, instead of getting a uh, paying off the debt, we ended up with about a twelve trillion dollar debt at the end of the administration. Well, these people, some of them clowns, not all of them, running around saying uh, Barack Obama is a socialist. Barack Obama drove up the national debt to fourteen trillion dollars, then they dance around in a certain about that and congratulate each other. Mm-hmm. That's not true. No, I think the dirty secret is actually that Obama's a, a moderate conservative. And if I were a liberal Democrat, I'd be pretty upset. Well, the point is, it gets back to the numbers. A $14 trillion debt, uh, half of it's from Bush, and almost half of that is from the tax cut. Another portion is from the prescription drug bill. And the whole rest of that really is from a lousy economy under Bush and these two wars he came up with. Well, that's right. We uh, the, the Republicans keep saying that tax cuts are uh, are the key to prosperity. Well, the 2000s is evidence that that's not true. And also, we raised taxes in 1982. They said it would be a recession. We raised taxes again in 1993. They said it would be a recession. We had booming economies in the 1980s and 90s. I think if we went back to the taxes that we had in the 80s and 90s, we'd be a lot better off. What is the argument against uh, the kind of tax policy? Well, let's just say it again. It seems to me we had a, a heck of a great economy in the 90s with a tax rate for people in the higher brackets of about 39.6 as opposed to 35, right? Right. Th- and and yet, that is the one that the rich bitch about, to use a crude term. And well, yet that didn't hurt the economy and it helped balance the budget. Well, that's right. Uh, and, and don't forget also that Ronald Reagan raised the capital gains tax rate to 28% in 1986, and now it's only 15%. And, of course, the wealthier you are, the more of your income comes from capital gains. Yeah, we, we had last night we showed the 400 richest people in the country whose average income is $270 million a year pay about the same as a poor person pays. They pay yes. about 18%. That's, that's right, uh, of income taxes. That's right. Whereas the middle class and the upper middle class who think they're the majority of the country, and they actually are, they're paying a higher rate. That's right. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any question that we we would have positive economic effects if we went back to the the Clinton era tax rates. Why don't economists say this that you're just saying? How come I need to drag you on the show? Well, you read your column, but the fact is, just a simple math to reiterate, we have a $14 trillion debt right now. Half it came from the Bush era. Almost half of that came from the tax cuts Bush pushed through in a partisan way. And the rest came from his prescription drug bill, which wasn't funded, and with the terrible economy and the two wars that he promulgated. Well, uh, that's, at least, simple, that's simple math there. That's right. But uh, in the Republican playbook, of course, the deficit is never caused by tax cuts. As or you know, wars. Or wars. As you know, they, they, they go around saying the Bush tax cuts did not lose, lose any revenue. A number of uh, prominent uh, officials, uh, Mitch McConnell included, have said this. And I, 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 it's, it's just mathematically And, and if ridiculous. a Republican gets behind a social program like prescription drugs, it's not socialism. But if a Democrat says you, you can't go into the ER anymore for free, you've got to kick in something, which is to me pretty conservative. Which is Bush, the, the, the Obama health care plan basically makes everybody pay something, which sounds pretty Republican in the old days. Republicans call it socialism. They'd rather you go to the ER and get treated free. Well, as but that's know, what's going on now. Well, as you know, the, 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 the Obama plan, the Affordable Health Care Act, was essentially the same thing as the Republicans themselves had been pushing only a few years Richard earlier. Richard Nixon pushed an employer mandate, not just an individual. He wanted the individual not to have to pay any health care costs. All bosses had to pay all the health care costs. That would have been the Nixon rule. Yeah, well, the, the Heritage Foundation, more, much more recently than that, proposed a, 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 an individual mandate. And now all of a sudden that's, you know. You know 
I feel like sanity's just walked in the door here. <laughs> Bruce Barr, it's so, it's so great of you to come on the show. Bottom line, now that I realize you're smart and you have all the numbers, give me two seconds. Any way to solve this, this kerfuffle we're in right now, this debt ceiling thing? I think at this point, there's nothing that can pass the House of Representatives. I think the bank Because it's too much of a zoo. Yeah, I think the I think a, a good chunk of the Republican caucus is either stupid, crazy, ignorant, or craven cowards that were desperately afraid of the Tea Party people, and rightly so. I love it. Thank you. I can't add to that, Bruce Bartlett. But you use tougher words than I usually use. I just say a zoo.